Where are we going anyway? Just hear me out. You said we were gonna go play mini golf. <laughs> Respectfully, Professor. I can't actually believe you fell for that. I love mini golf. Yeah. Zombies are often associated with dark, heavy stories for mature audiences. The Walking Dead and The Last of Us are standouts in the genre, each covering topics like betrayal, surviving in a bleak world, and deciding whether to make the ultimate sacrifice. That's not Dead Rising. Dead Rising has always been about comedy, racking up huge zombie kill counts, and creating some crazy death-dealing weapons. The fourth entry in the series aims to bring players back to where it all began, Willamette, Colorado. However, developer Capcom Vancouver has made some controversial changes to the franchise's formula that has many fans worried. Does Dead Rising 4 land on Santa's Naughty or Nice List? Dead Rising 4 takes place 16 years after the events of Dead Rising. The citizens of Willamette, Colorado have descended upon their new mall to celebrate Black Friday, and then all hell breaks loose. Despite finding a cure for the virus in Dead Rising 3, a new zombie outbreak occurs with the entire town infected in hours. Perplexed, the Zombie Defense Force recruits Frank West to go into Willamette once more and help them find the source of the outbreak and implicate the Pentagon, who has so far been able to deny any wrongdoing. Dead Rising Force strength is its comedy. <laughs> I really thought that would work. While the plot twists are predictable, the villain forgettable, and many of the characters stereotypical, it's all handled with hilarity. This is the Frank West show, and he's actually a fantastic protagonist, as Victor Noslo delivers a strong, comical performance as everyone's favorite photojournalist. The only problem with the plot is its one-note villain who is hastily set up towards the end of the campaign. He feels forced in and completely out of place compared to the rest of the characters. In fact, the entire final chapter feels out of place with the rest of the game. While the previous five chapters have all been light-hearted, the final chapter takes a very dark and serious tone. It comes out of nowhere and stands in stark contrast to everything that came before it. Those powering through the campaign will likely beat it between 6-8 to eight hours, but that's ignoring the large amount of content available. Like the original Dead Rising, players can explore the mall in its entirety, however, they can now travel into the town of Willamette. It's here that you'll find a large amount of rumors to check out, survivors to rescue, and shelters to clear. That's all great, but there's no denying how much fun just driving around Willamette is. The town is fully realized and it's where players can hop in all kinds of vehicles and just flatten hordes of zombies. One thing that isn't so grand is the loss of the timer. While the campaign is structured well to where the absence of the timer isn't felt, it's still disappointing there isn't the option to have it enabled. Slaughtering thousands of zombies wouldn't be any fun if the gameplay wasn't solid, so thankfully Dead Rising 4 is highly entertaining to play. Almost any item players can find in the environment can be used as a melee or ranged weapon and further enhanced by collecting blueprints. The brand new exosuits further enhance the combat. With the exosuit, Frank can use all manner of heavy objects as weapons, such as Christmas trees as spears and presents as boxing gloves. Melee combat is by far the best way to go as the weapons are creative and the carnage is amazing. It's some of the most fun and satisfying melee combat in any game. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for ranged combat. Despite being the fourth entry in the franchise, the shooting mechanics still feel off-putting. Aiming feels stiff, guns aren't very effective, and the brain-dead human AI is somehow dumber than the actual zombies. There are some cool ranged weapons Frank can make, but melee is the way to go. Another controversial change is the removal of co-op campaign. Capcom Vancouver has crafted a standalone four-player co-op mode where survivors traverse the mall completing randomized objectives. Each of the four episodes takes place over two days, which equates to about 30 minutes of playtime. Players can find and collect the same blueprints, weapons, and exosuits they found in the campaign, though it does have its own progression system. However, there isn't much else to this mode. There's no additional story taking place, nor any real interaction between the four characters. Plus, the co-op action is limited to the mall, cutting out a significant portion of the world. This mode was a fascinating idea on paper, but it can't hold a candle to the excellent campaign co-op from previous games. Fans can breathe a sigh of relief. Despite some controversial decisions, Capcom Vancouver has retained what made the series so appealing in the first place. This goes well, you get the next one. Fist bump. Uh, no. Come on, just do it. 
With the exception of the final chapter, the campaign is highly engaging to play through. Melee combat gives players the reins to use any tool in the world they find, combine it with something else, and then use that contraption to beat the brains out of zombies. It's a shame that some of the controversial decisions didn't pay off, as the co-op mode doesn't feel like a solid enough replacement for campaign co-op, and it remains puzzling why there isn't at least an option for a timer. While Capcom Vancouver enhanced the melee combat with the new exosuits, it remains a mystery why they couldn't improve the shooting mechanics. Dead Rising 4 is a Dead Rising game, warts and all, a zombie slaying experience unlike anything else on the market. It's a riot, it's a hoot, it's on Santa's nice list. For more on Dead Rising 4 and everything gaming related, head on over to HardcoreGamer.com for your fix.